Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. I've been working with Thea on the backhand slice technique recently, and while her slice is not bad, it lacks penetration and doesn't really bite through the court. She manages to defend from difficult situations, but since the slice is too slow, she oftentimes ends up in defense again and finds it difficult to turn the tables in the rally in her favor. As you can see, her slice is fairly consistent, but it floats a little bit too much. You may already notice that she turns her head a lot immediately after contact and that she also turns her body quickly towards the court. When we compare her slice technique with my backhand slice, you can see much more clearly the differences, namely the direction of the shoulder axis and the head orientation. The main two reasons for her over rotations are that she is used to finding power from rotation as she plays a two-handed backhand where she constantly turns her body during the stroke. Since she hits 90% or more of backhands with two hands, she gets very used to that rotation. The other reason is more mental, because she may be anxious to see what happens with her stroke and therefore turns her head quickly, which in turn also pulls her shoulders. In order to correct her backhand slice, we need to address the technical and the mental causes, otherwise the problem will persist. The following drills are not only corrective exercises for the backhand slice, but also my usual drills for teaching proper backhand slice technique in the first place. The first one is walking through the slice. In this drill I ask Thea to continue walking across the court and pay attention to her body orientation, which should be at all times in the direction of the walk. Because she's walking all the time, she would find it quite difficult to rotate through the shot, as it's much more natural now to keep the body facing to the side. While she still does turn her body slightly, she is getting the feel for this drill and in combination with the next two drills, she can feel the right way to generate power without turning her body. She can hit three balls in one go and then repeat the drill. We did this for about 30 balls at once. Hitting backwards. This drill exaggerates the feeling of hitting a backhand slice. Namely, when we hit the slice, our body is facing 90 degrees away from the direction of the stroke. Since Thea over-rotates and actually wants to face the direction of the stroke too early, I overcorrect her and ask her to hit backwards. That way she starts to develop new fields of how she can generate power in her body, even when she doesn't rotate the hips and shoulders. She positions herself in a normal neutral position for the back and slice, and hits a few usual shots over the net from my drop feet. Next I drop the ball slightly closer to her and ask her to hit to the side fence behind her back. We alternate this hitting pattern a few times, so that she can transfer the feel of hitting backwards also to the strokes where she hits normal shots over the net. This is also a very useful correction drill for the one-handed backhand stroke, in case the player happens to over-rotate. Hitting downwards. Most players think of a backhand slice as a very horizontal and circular stroke, when in fact it's more downward and linear stroke through contact. Yes, pro players very quickly turn their shoulders after hitting the ball, and that may deceive us into thinking that we need to rotate through contact. But when it comes to the fundamental technique of a backhand slice, we don't rotate through the hitting part. In order to give Thea the feel of hitting the ball properly, I ask her to hit slice backhands very close to the net and hit them downwards. At the same time, I'm asking her to stay sideways and hit diagonal shots, which again gives her the feel of hitting backwards. There are two more cues that I give her. The first one is pull your shoulder blades together and the second one is stretch your chest muscles. This again leads her in the right direction of engaging her body biomechanically correctly which generates a lot of power without body rotation. As she starts to feel the power and starts to trust the stroke, she'll be able to let go of the desire to turn and the desire to look too quickly after her stroke to see what happened. The tricky part when it comes to the back and slice is that we oftentimes play it in defensive situations and are therefore anxious to get out of them as soon as possible. This anxiousness causes us to try and see very quickly what happens with our slice 
and in the process we rotate through the stroke causing it to float. Therefore we must develop certain mental discipline to stay sideways through the shot until we feel that we have completed the follow through as only then we can hit a penetrating back and slice that will neutralize our opponent and prevent the next attacking shot. Chea is now starting to develop proper feel for generating power on the slice without the body rotation so we need to see if she can execute a proper back and slice also on the baseline. As you can see here and there the slice might still float but most are hit much better than at the start of the session which lasted only about 15 minutes. There is of course still some work to be done on the slice but Thea is now on the right track to having a much more effective backhand slice. I invite you to test these backhand slice drills for yourself and let me know how they work for you. Thanks and enjoy the game!